Vato with Janio, the first ever video game review. The game we're going to be reviewing today is going to be The Order 1886 for the PlayStation 4. It was developed by Ready at Dawn Studios and produced by SCEA. Ever since the trailer came out for this in E3 2013, people have been asking themselves, this is the new generation. Is this going to be it? Is this going to be the first must-have game for the new generation? Um, the unfortunate short answer to that is no, it's not. This is an average game, unfortunately. Um, I believe that's caused by a studio's decision to make average choices for their gameplay mechanics and their story. Um, the one thing you can't knock about this game, though, are the graphics. The graphics are amazing. They're so gorgeous, so well done. It seems like this is where their main concern was in this game, were the graphics. They wanted a cinematic game. Um, and that first off is the graphics. Um, they're beautiful, like I said, so detailed, so lush, so many things, such like the hair looks good, best mustaches in video games by far. Um, there's so many little details that you'll see just like from just like the doorknobs to the smoke to the animations of the characters and the characters' models. Um, the character doesn't feel pasted on, they feel like they're actually in this game which is really fantastic. It just works so well. Um, and the fact that the graphics are so good, it builds this awesome atmosphere for the game. It feels really good. Like, um, it feels alive that this is happening. There's a scene where you're in a crashed Zeppelin. There's fire everywhere. There's like just twisted metal. And it looks gorgeous. It pulls you into that moment. Um, the unfortunate thing is that both you and I know is that graphics don't make a video game. Um, it's mainly going to be the gameplay. And the gameplay in this game is just lacking severely. Um, it's basically your standard cover shooter. Not a bad situation. Um, the main issue this game has with that and the gameplay is the pacing. The pacing is completely off in this game. It is, just drags this game along where you'll sit through 10 minutes of videos and then you'll play for a couple minutes and there's another 10 minutes of video. There's so many videos in this game. There's a video for Galahad, your character you're playing as, to walk down the street, walk downstairs, and it shows this whole thing. He walks down the stairs slowly, he's not running, he just paces down the stairs, crosses the street, meets up with his team members and goes, let's go. That's a video in this game. And that just can't be done. Um, there's too many videos. It almost feels like Ready or Dawn forgot they were making a video game. That they were in the middle of it, they'd be going and be like, oh shit, we're making a video game. We need, to, we need to do something here to interact. So they'll throw in a random QTE of hold triangle down to reach for this key. Or hold X, tap X to lift up this log. And I can't tell you how many times I've lifted up a heavy log of just wood out, to get it out of my way. Or how many times I would push a cart with a character and it's not like a quick push, it would be like a minute of me just pushing a cart. And it's just unnecessary. It just drags the game down. It, it's not firing all cylinders. Um, and the issue with being so cinematic, they make some choices that uh, I don't... I think that hinder the game. Um, one big choice they made is to make it more cinematic by having the black bars top and bottom, cutting off most of the screen. Um, for the most part, it looks good, but there are certain situations where your character is taking up a quarter of the screen. You can see, here's a screen, your character's here. It takes up too much of the screen. You can't see who's shooting you, where the shooting you're at. You can't see above you, you can't see below you. And it gets a little annoying is the best way. To, I don't know where I'm being shot at. It's just, it brings your side of view way down. And for a game, you need that view. It's, it's not a movie, it's a video game. You need to have that open up. So it's a give and take. Sometimes it looks beautiful with it, sometimes it's in your way. Um, and the thing about this game, it's average. Um, there's a lot of decisions they've made. I don't necessarily understand. Um, we'll take gameplay elements. Like, they'll take mechanics and they don't run with it. It's just like a one shot thing. Like, for example, you have to signal a Zeppelin. I mean, you use the touchpad to do this, to do Morse code. Really wonderful idea for the touchpad. And you use it once, just once, and it's gone. It's done. And it's like, well, that should come back. 
And um, there was a part where they force you to sneak through a garden. And it's just fucking awful. It's so frustrating with the, the bars. You can't see that well. Um, it was almost like, well, we have enough shooting. Let's put the sneaking side in. And it really just, oh, bad taste in my mouth. And it's like, oh, it's bad taste. That's <laughs> all I can say. It's a bad taste. Um, other decisions they've made that I don't agree with. From the look of the trailers, it seemed like this was going to be very supernatural. Like You had these werewolves, um, big bad werewolves. Looks like you're going to run from them. Um, I think there are about five interactions with werewolves. There's the small werewolves and the elderly werewolves. Um, the small werewolves, it's awful. It's so awful when you run into these guys because you walk into a room and then there will be about three werewolves and they'll come at you one at a time. They just run straight at you. You have to shoot them till the X prompt comes up so you dive out of the way. You do that with the next one, dive out of the way till they finally hit the ground then you do another QTE to kill them. You do this three times in this game. And these are one, some of the few times you actually interact with these werewolves. It's just a big open warehouse room. They run at you one at a time. It's awful. It's so uh, disappointing. It's so very disappointing. Um, the other two interactions I know for sure you have with werewolves are the same exact interaction. The issue with this is one happens at the beginning of the game, a couple of chapters in. The next happens at the very end of the game. The final boss is a repeat of an earlier boss. And that's just unacceptable. And the only difference is, you know, the reactions to the QTEs. Instead of being thrown into a table, you're thrown into a wall. It's awful. It's a really bad decision. Um, they could have cut one of those out and it would have been fine. But to have both of them in there doesn't make sense and basically the fights are glorified QTEs you guys just circle each other you hit L2 or R2 to hit him then you hit the left right back or down on the stick to dodge his hit you keep doing that it'll throw in a tap X at you to kind of you know loosen things up change it up a bit and it just falls flat it just seems like why it just seems pointless and it's such like it's an average move to make it just knocks it back down to average back down to average you have this build up and it's the same fight you had earlier in the game that's a bad move at any part bad move um, next we can talk about the story um, the story for a game that's more than half story is not very it's not that good um, and the, the problem is it could be good. They make a lot of decisions. They leave it open. Basically, this game is sequel bait for the sequel. Um, there's a lot of open-ended, you know, stories. Questions don't get answered. The game ends so abruptly. It's, it's kind of in shock. Of like, oh, that's the end? After all this, that's the end? It's, it's awful. Um, spoiler, for example, uh, there's an India company. Um, they're shipping things. Um, the werewolves are shipping these containers around the world. Uh, come to find out, what's in those containers are vampires. You see one vampire, um, you burn the warehouse down, and then that's it. That's the end of it. And I don't know lichen or werewolf or vampire lore that well, but I don't think they work together. I feel like they fight each other. That's me. I don't know. It just seems like a weird... It's a cool idea, they just don't expand upon it, and it ends up being just an average idea. It doesn't go anywhere. Um, you don't care about any of these people. At least I didn't. I had no care. People were dying. I was like, okay, fine, what's next? Um, which is this weird situation where characters basically have elixirs that keep them immortal, but then they die. It's kind of... Like I said, it's what whatever they want, whatever the story needs to go, not necessarily what the characters are doing. Um, like I said, a lot of open ends. It's just bad storytelling, full of tropes and nothing that really pays off. There's no payoff in this game. It's all unsatisfactory um, with the story. And now, I know it sounds like I've been saying a lot of negative about this game, but I did enjoy my time with it. Um, 
I believe if the game was seven hours of actual gameplay, then you tack on the videos and the QTs on top of that, I don't think there'd be as big of an issue with this game. Um, I feel like this game came out in the wrong generation. If this was a PS3 game, PS2 game, um, I think it would be loved. It would be great to see this. But we're living in a time now where we need some sort of innovation. We can't just recycle these old games and slap a new paint of cone on them or a coat of paint and be like, welcome to the new generation, here we go. Um, we're expecting more from that. And the fact is this game has no replayability. Um, they have collectibles in the games, but there's no way to tell what you've picked up, what you've seen. It's awfully done. I don't understand why they would make such a decision if you're going to have these collectibles and you want people to replay it. Give them, okay, you've collected this on this chapter. Because it's already split up into chapters because you usually go three collectibles in this chapter, blah, blah, blah. They don't do that. They give you nothing. And that's just a bad design choice. That's That doesn't make me want to replay it. I don't care enough about the trophy in that sense to go through that game again and it's not a long game but uh, it's unfortunate um, so overall do I think you should play it yeah I think you people will have fun with this game I think it's worth playing um, is it worth paying 60 bucks for I don't believe it is um, this is something I believe you should rent or if it goes on sale for cheap go for it and buy it um, Ready at Dawn seems like a competent, talented studio. I will definitely keep an eye on them to see what they come out with next, but I'm on guard now. Um, like I said, they made a good game. Not a good game. They made an average game that could have been great, could have been awful. It's just average, and that's almost worse than being awful. It's just having an average game. And hopefully if they make a sequel, they learn from their mistakes because they're going to need to. So in closing, we're going to split up the positives and negatives of the order. First positive, by far, has to be the graphics. They're stunning. They look wonderful. They're the best you're going to see on the PlayStation 4 and set a new benchmark of what graphics can be. The second is the atmosphere. The atmosphere pulls you in. It looks wonderful. You feel like you're in the middle of a Zeppelin. You feel like you're in London or the catacombs. Now, the negative sides to the game, the pacing is off. It drags too much video compared to gameplay. The story is not satisfying nothing ever pays off in this game and there's just a lack of innovation it's just the same thing you've played over and over before so in final score of this game we're gonna give it not one not two but two and a half out of five it's an average game and that's the ultimate sin it makes um that's a review kind of a bumpy ride for first one um, if you'd like to see more we have a facebook page at facebook.com slash bot company uh, we have Twitter, that's twitter.com slash thebaco, Instagram is instagram.com slash thebaco, Twitch is twitch.tv slash thebaco. Come check us out and hopefully we'll have another review coming up soon. I'm thinking Bloodborne, who knows?